But every generation at the school has the responsibility to create the foundation that the next generation will build on. I've been at Dwight since kindergarten, and I've basically spent my whole life at DE. I'd like to think that the story of Dwight is about evolving <laughs> and for the better. I think we have people here who care about education and our students, but also care in a broader sense to look at what we are, what we've been, and, and think about how we can be better. I entered Dwight in uh, 1952, and my uh, youngest son uh, was graduated in 1986. Family members who've attended here, my father, my mother, my aunt, Mary Lou Heath, her three daughters. 30 years. It's my 30th year anniversary of graduating from Dwighting Away. My brother, my sister, and my second cousin, and two of my sons, and hopefully two more. I see my grandchildren, and I think they're going to be grateful for their years here at, at Dwight Englewood. I think it brings at least my children a lot of pride that they're, they're the first fourth generation um, members of the school. What was pretty profound for me this year, more so than the previous years at the school, was that in the 125th anniversary year, we talked to a lot of alumni, I was talking to a lot of current families, we had a lot of activities at the school. And what you realize is we really are shaped by all these experiences that came before us. But the fact that in all of its years, the school was always willing to allow children to sort of do their own thing, to find their own passion. And that commonality of experiences is what makes this school special. What I found really exciting while being at Dwight, my intellectual curiosity was was heightened in a way that it wasn't, at least maybe not even for, in university for some of us. Uh, and our teachers were really invested in not only making sure that we were learning and being educated in the classroom, but they really took a huge concern in how we were as individuals and our, our growth as individuals. The quintessential Dwight Englewood site if you walk around the halls is to see teachers and students in one-on-one -on -one interactions. A lot of coaching, a lot of individual work happens. We've structured a schedule that makes that possible. That's pretty unique. I haven't seen that in other schools that I've encountered. What does it mean when children have this type of an education, to have small classes, the best in technology, a wealth of elective programming, faculty who are just ultra dedicated to what they're doing? What does it mean? What, what do you do with that privilege? And, and I think the answer is make it better. This isn't a school that just wants to produce a doctor, lawyer, engineer, another successful businessman. This is a school who wants to produce a doctor, lawyer, engineer, another business person who's going to go out into the world and actually make a difference. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon and I've been volunteering for the past 20 years with Mission Restore to make impact in, in Africa, uh, Middle East, Southeast Asia, and South America. And it really involves three parts. Us going there and spending time with the surgeons there on difficult cases, sponsoring the surgeons from there to come and spend time with us, and also the other part is actually helping the next generation of doctors here in the U.S. get interested in it in a way that I had the opportunity to get interested in it. The idea of giving back is really powerful, and the school has a rich history of that. Some of the most important things to me have definitely been my involvement with um, community service in the South Bronx. Um, I volunteer and I also teach um, music lessons. I definitely knew that I wanted to merge my passion for the violin with service. Sarah single-handedly took a program of giving back old instruments and took it from here to here. She took a very privileged life experience at our school and she's literally changed and transformed the life experiences of a whole other group of children because she decided to give back. Teachers always encourage us not to just focus on the day-to-day -day and um, not to be so introspective, to look out um, past our personal circumstance and um, look at the big picture and trying to make a change. I think Dwight Englewood has been keeping up with the changes in the world of making sure that their graduates, the students, are prepared for that. 
you cannot have a 125th anniversary without thinking about the next 125 years. It became pretty evident to the board and to myself uh, that we really needed to create an integrated platform for what we call the STEM fields, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. It's not designed to meet the needs of what we need today. It's a building that goes much beyond that, and it's a building that's going to push us. The Dwight Ingold community is not standing still. There is a sense of progress and growth, and, and I hope that's our story. All the things that Dwayne Wood brings in is really within a small family of how you treat each other. You know, the respect, honesty. And then going beyond that, what are you doing for your town? What are you doing for your city? What are you doing for your country? And what are you doing for the world? DE means respect. Honesty. Judgment. Courage. Commitment. And community. I always say that the first three words of our mission statement are no accident as a community. Because what we are is we're a collection of people who come together because we share a common philosophy. But it's actually interesting because when we were doing the one, two, five picture and you had a thousand individuals each doing their little role to create a picture that they couldn't actually even visualize because from the ground it just looked like a mob of people. And it wasn't until we saw the picture that we went, oh my gosh, it's a perfect one, two, five. And there's just a lot of fantastic symbolism in that, I think. 